I got a box that I uh, bought, and uh, seems like anybody that deals with electronics or has Dixie clocks or VFD clocks or metals around with uh, general electronics and fi fixing it and tinkering with it, they sort of start meddling with this. They get one of these little clocks, and uh, there's hundreds of videos on YouTube on these things. So this is one of them uh, wannabe uh, Nixie type clock where it uses IPS uh, screens to uh, make up the uh, so-called Nixie clock and they're encapsulated with a, a little globe dome for uh, making it look like a Nixie. So I got one. <coughs> Just want to check it out and see how cool it is and I got something a little different coming too that's uh, sort of in the same category as this thing. So you'll have to stay tubed and uh, subscribe when I get that in because it hasn't come in yet. So let's open this up and uh, check this uh, wild thing out. Right on the top of the box says made in China. Well, of course it is. So we got that kind. Brand new, creative, made in China. Customization. Wow. So all we need is uh, something with five volts with an amp. So that's what's going to be used to power this little bugger. So we got the, uh, looks like the base. Not that kind of b -b 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 base. I don't know, what do you guys think? Do you think you, you like these kind of videos where I open up the box and I have no idea what I'm doing and stuff like that? Do you guys appreciate that? Do you watch it or do you just skip ahead? My guess is you skip ahead. Some of you watch from, uh, start to finish so we got uh, all that good stuff got a Wi-Fi chip it's got a backup battery now in the back I guess this is how many that it the uh, number of this one? I don't know. So, at least we got all the buttons on top. We got a mode button and a forward button and a back button. We got a power button. So that's cool. Got USB-C to plug in. And then I guess the rest of it is all... Uh, you either uh, metal with it or uh, probably hooks up to Wi-Fi and stuff like that. So it's the Elks Tube IPS. It's got uh, one, two, three, four, six little screens. And everything in China. QR codes from the last that I read don't work, so. We don't need instructions anyway. It comes with an Allen key. In case you need, oh, you gotta get into it. In case you need to change the battery. So I gotta take uh, probably the side off and probably both sides to get the top deck off to uh, access the battery. So that's not a huge deal. We get a uh, USB-C to USB-A cord. 
standard issue. And then we'll put this over here for a minute. We'll put that over there. We'll get the top of the box so we can use it as a prop. So you can see a little better from whoever is watching. So now we got six individual little screens. So here's the little screens. That's pretty cool. So we'll take the little protectors out. So I would imagine that the battery side is forward. Robo collar, because if it was an actual human, they would have let it go until the thing picks up and says, "Please enter your blah 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 passcode." So, since it didn't go that long, I know it's a robot. And since it's election season, because it's the uh, first of November, everybody's looking for their vote, and you get all kinds of stupid calls now from different parts of the country, like Texas. In Florida, and of course Pennsylvania, and you know, if they're local, uh, New York, and stuff like that. It's a bunch of crap. And then we got six of these little glass envelopes to uh, stick over the, uh, over each one, and it's keyed. So there's two little teeth in the back, and the teeth go toward the back. So we'll put that in there. And that's all it does, just sit on there. So, definitely something you don't want to be uh, having a little, your little feline, feline friends, or canine friends, or ferrets, or gerbils, or anything to knock it off because uh, these things go flying, they'll probably break. And then it's not like you can go out and get replacements very easily. It's all the bits. Nicely packed, you know, for something from China. You know, it's all nice foam. So, no worries of having that shipped in. So now we need a USB cable. USB-C. So we'll get one untangled here. And we'll plug it in and see what happens. See if it smokes. So it doesn't do anything off the bat, so let's hit the uh, power button. Is that one on? I think it is. So let's see, push and hold. No. Don't like this kind? We'll try a different kind. I don't know. Maybe it's a dud. Let's try this one. See if any of these uh, QR codes work. Probably not. I 
The address is invalid. Yep, that's figures. Let's see. They're all the same. So that was a fail. Maybe I got the tubes on backwards. I don't know. So we'll go the other way. Okay, so we'll try this again. There's not going to be plugged on this side. So I don't know. I'll have to uh, go on the tubes and uh, see what I'm doing wrong. So I'll be back. So the little clock works. Apparently it's uh, kind of fussy on what kind of cable you put in it, which is kind of odd. So for starters, I just used their cable and I put it on a power bank and it, and it lit up. So some of my cables, they're all good cables, but I just they won't power the clock for whatever reason. I don't know why. Just one of them oddities. So I got uh, actually a micro USB with a well, with a USB C adapter, and it, it fires right up. So a clock that boots. <laughs> oh dear! Let me show you that boot up process again. Can you imagine having a clock that has to boot? So, I'll have to turn this off. And then we'll plug this in. And you can watch the clock boot. So there's the uh, one of the Nixie displays. So, you know, me being a diehard Nixie, looking at the uh, very two dimensional Nixie. Maybe from a distance it might look okay, you know, if you don't know any better. But since I'm a Nixie Nazi, it's not a Nixie. It looks like a Nixie, but it doesn't have the depth. Now, when you look at a real Nixie clock, even if you look at it from straight on, you know it's a Nixie. This one, 
of course, when you look at it straight on, uh, yeah, it looks like a Nixie, but it's it's not a Nixie. You know, especially when you do this, you, and you don't see that depth. Especially when it's counting, like this one here, you don't see the numbers doing this. Even when you look at a real Nixie head on, you can, you got the depth perception of it going back and forth. So this one's got kind of, uh, I would say more of a flat look, but there's another, there's actually another one in here that gives the, uh, the grid looks a little bit more uh, coarse than the uh, previous one, which uh, you might as well say has a fine mesh. This one has a coarse mesh, but and this one gives a little bit more detail on kind of what a Nixie looks like to the point where it uh, it kind of uh, of course, it probably the camera won't pick up, but it kind of tries to simulate when a number is being blocked by the other ones. You know, the little bits and pieces that get blocked. So, it's kind of cool. And then it's got all kinds of different features on here. I'm just playing. Really, the only thing I got this for is just to have it uh, playing with the Nixies. What the Nixies look like. So there's uh, two different Nixie, orange Nixies. And then we got retro hippie style. Then we got uh, they're trying to simulate kind of like a uh, flip clock, but because it, it's got a fold in the middle of them so it doesn't it's not really flipping it's just counting and I guess this is kind of like their version of a VFD but it's got a Nixie grid pattern in front of it so a green Nixie it's kind of lame Then we got that weird one. So there's a lot of videos on, on this stuff there. You all have seen these different patterns. And then we go back to the uh, the original one. The flat one. So I would leave it on that one because that looks more... The most realistic for 2D. And then uh, on the back side of this thing. It's more going to uh, light up the back. Uh, if you got this like against the wall or something, it would light up the back of the wall. But it doesn't, you don't really see it from the front. Uh, you might, you see a little bit of reflection uh, off the top of the tube. And another, another observation, uh, looking at the Nixies, a real Nixie goes almost to the top of the globe. And same thing with the bottom. So, you know, that's just the drawback of having uh, little screens inside a dome. Maybe if they made the uh, domes just a tick smaller, shorter, so it would be a little bit more realistic if it was on a Nixie setting. So it's kind of a fun gadget to have, but uh, I got this to see... Because I wanted to see one up in person uh, if it looks like a, uh, a Nixie. But when you got the real thing, let's see if we can get Yana over here. Yana, you want to play nice? Come here, Yana. So Yana's going to do her thing. I'm going to put her right on top, right behind the tubes. So you can see. Maybe the camera can pick it up, but I think you can sort of... Yeah, you can sort of... Maybe if I turn it like this. See the depth of Yana? So 
So, you know, you get the look of a Nixie, but it's not really a Nixie. Closest, closest thing to be uh, to that one would be uh, a five something Nixie. Maybe an IN14 would be the closest, but I don't have a six. And the other, other thing here on this one no separators between you know the two um, individual Nixies. I mean, unlike a, a real Nixie clock where you've got the, uh, the separators. That would be more realistic on here. If they had uh, like a like an LED or something like that uh, separator, because it all looks like just a bunch of numbers, you know. Unless you uh, say, well, it's uh, three forty-two and fifty-three seconds. So that's the only other drawback with this one, and when it's in clock bone, no separators. So you know, we can we can go all day just looking for faults and stuff like that. You know, I, and apparently this thing can go on and get on Wi-Fi and, and probably sync and all that other good stuff. But there's lots and lots of videos on here. You know, I got this little bugger just to say, uh, let's check out the Nixie uh, segments in there. And, of course, I think you'd have to, I would have to hook up my little mini PC and stuff like that if I wanted to download the uh, additional... Uh, clock faces you might as well say to uh, change the look and apparently on this clock uh, each each tube can be a different display so so we'll just uh, pretty much end it here uh, a Nixie clock that is uh, more of a fantasy but it is kind of cool so it's it's nice to have around you know in case you know there's gonna be a time where I think all Nixies are just going to be unaffordable, you know, the new old stock, uh, but uh, even the new stuff, you know, like the stuff from Mill Clock and uh, the stuff from uh, Delabore Farney, uh, if you get a completed kit, you know, a 4-tube or a 6-tube clock, it's going to cost you a couple grand, a couple of grand. <laughs> it's kind of like my 8-tube uh, in 18 o'clock each tube you might as well say is a hundred bucks so that's a $800 bill just for the tubes and then you will say a couple hundred bucks you know two three I think it was two something for the for the board for the completed board and stuff like that so you know these little hobby clocks are, are not cheap but you know something like this it's it's affordable you sort of get the look if you don't know any better so that's it for this video thanks for watching and uh we'll see you on the next video with another uh nixie clock you know or repair or or some kind of rambling babbling and stuff like that so we'll see you on the next video bye bye